Hi, this is Mark Malberg of Verified Technologies. In this video, we're going to take a look at the actual measurement of a brake rotor. Now, if you've jumped in at this point, you probably need to go back and review the calibration video and perhaps the probe verification video, as they are helpful pieces to get your system running as accurately as possible. But in this video, we're going to dive into the actual measurement of a brake rotor, and we're going to cover a few things to get ready for the measurement, and then you'll find out how easy the measurement can actually be. When we're setting up for a measurement, the first thing we need to do is tell the brake view system the type of measurement we want to make. So let's go to the menu and choose measurement type. Here we will find two different measurement types. One is a vehicle style measurement where you're spinning a component by hand and the speed may vary. And in this style measurement we're going to collect five rotations and use brake view's patented mathematics to correct the speed variations. The other type of measurement is more of a laboratory style measurement where we have a motorized spindle spinning the component at a constant speed. In the motorized or laboratory world, we only need one revolution to collect our data. For this demonstration, we're going to choose a vehicle style measurement as I will be spinning a brake rotor by hand. Let's take a look at BrakeView's probes now. There are two types of probes included in the BrakeView kit. One is the actual measurement style probe for sensing roundness, runouts, flatness, thickness variation. These are LVDTs. They are our actual measurement probes. Often we'll place a button style tip on them, especially if we're measuring over a brake rotor with drilled or slotted features. The other probe is our photo sensor. And let's spend a little time with a photo sensor. This sensor actually detects the rotations of the component we're measuring. Now we'll put all of our probes and photo sensor into our universal holder for this demonstration. And you can see the photo sensor comes into the middle and the two probes are mounted on the top and bottom with a button tip installed on each. The photo sensor is important as it gives us the ability to detect rotations. Now in this setup I've actually placed a piece of tape on the edge of the rotor and the photo sensor is looking at the slot in the edge of the rotor watching the tape pass by. Based on how close the probe is to the tape or how dark the color of the tape is compared to the rotor, these kind of variables often require that we make an adjustment to the sensitivity of the photo sensor. So let's go to the photo sensor setup in the software and adjust the threshold. This threshold is that point where the intensity crosses once per revolution. It's very important that we set this threshold, and I'm using the left and right arrows here to do this. We must set this in a place where only once per revolution we see this pulse. And if we have once per revolution in its pulse form, we'll get an accurate measurement of each revolution of the brake rotor. So here we have the tape crossing in front of the photo sensor, and as the tape crosses, the needle passes the threshold only once, and nowhere else on this rotor does this needle cross the threshold. So our photo sensor is properly set up for this measurement. Now quick note here, sometimes it's useful to build the tape or the reflector into the measurement fixture, not the rotor itself. That way you can set up your photo sensor once based on the fixture and then measure multiple rotors without having to go through this step ever again. Now that the photo sensor is ready to detect revolutions, let's adjust the probe position so that they both stay in range during the entire measurement process. So we'll put the probes against the surface and spin the component watching the live meters on the brake view screen to make sure that they stay white throughout and centered as best as possible. At this point, our hardware is all ready for a measurement, but before we actually make the measurement, let's take a moment and tell BrakeView about the rotor that we're measuring. On the main BrakeView screen, you can see a Brake Info button. If we push this button, we can enter some information about the actual brake rotor we're measuring here. We can tell BrakeView that we're measuring an individual rotor, or for example, the front rotors from a vehicle, or the rear rotors, or all four. If we choose, for example, all four rotors and go back to the main rotor display screen, the arrow keys can be used to select the individual rotor that we're measuring on the vehicle. For this demo, let's go ahead and choose a counterclockwise spinning loose rotor and go back to the main menu. Now 
Now at this point we're all set, so we can start spinning our wheel and simply press record on the main screen and collect the data for this rotor. Now during measurement, each time the tape passes by the photo sensor, the beginning of a new rotation is registered in the software. At the end of five complete rotations, the mathematics take this data and correct for the speed variations and show the actual measured brake rotor. Now this was a brand new rotor taken right out of the box and it looks pretty nice on the display, but our scaling needs to be adjusted. So we're going to look into scaling a little more in an upcoming video, but for right now let's go to the menu and choose the scaling option and let's reduce the scale interval. If we reduce that low enough we can actually see the shape of the brake rotor and let's hit OK on that and go back to the main screen and now we have an animation of our brake rotor showing us the distortions along with a thickness variation and two runout values. So there you have a brake measurement. We can simply put new rotors into this fixture and remeasure easily now. And if you have any other questions on brake rotor measurement or using the BrakeView system, you can find us at BrakeView.com. Thanks.